Welcome to Music History Monday for January 15th, 2024. I'm Bob Greenberg, and the title for today's podcast is American Pie. If you haven't already, please consider joining me on my subscription site at patreon.com slash Robert Greenberg Music, where I blog, vlog, podcast, pontificate, review, and bloviate four to six times a week. On January 15th, 1972, 52 years ago today, Don McLean's folk rock song, American Pie, began what would eventually be a four-week stay at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The song made the singer, songwriter, and guitarist Don McLean, born 1945, very famous and very rich, and it is considered by many to be one of the greatest songs ever written. No one is perfect. Not a one of us is perfect. And that goes double, triple, quadruple for me. I eat ice cream right out of the carton before putting it back in the freezer and will guzzle club soda and tonic water out of the bottle before putting it back in the fridge. I will lick a knife with cream cheese or peanut butter on it, lest any of it go to waste, and I will observe my personal 10 to 15 second rule when I drop food on the floor, providing one of the cats hasn't gotten to it first. I don't always turn my socks right side out before putting them in the washing machine, and I have been known to forget to water the plants, even when I've been reminded to do so. Regarding the freaking plants, the heck with them if they don't have a sense of humor. Besides, do I ever ask them to make me a drink? FYI, I routinely introduce myself to house plants as Agent Orange. You can actually hear them shrivel. I would add in my favor that I always put the seat down and replace the toilet paper roll. I floss every day, hang up my towel, immediately put my dirty clothes in the hamper, and never, ever leave dirty dishes on the counter or in the sink. What, you ask, has prompted this bit of confession? which might very well be considered TMI by many, if not most of you. Here's why. By admitting to some of my many flaws, I am attempting to preemptively head off your criticism of me. Criticism for disparaging a rock and roll song considered by many to be an icon, a classic, one of the greatest songs of the rock and roll era, an era now some 70 years in age. The song I am referring to is none other than Don McLean's American Pie. We've been down this road before. This is not the first time I've proven myself aesthetically imperfect by offering up a less than positive critical evaluation of a presumably classic rock and roll song. Yes, I typically prefer to take a high critical road here on Patreon, but sometimes that's just not possible. Such a thing happened in my Music History Monday post of August 24th, 2020, a post that celebrated what was then the 45th anniversary of Freddie Mercury and Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. I admitted then, and will admit now, that I have always considered Bohemian Rhapsody to be among the most overrated things in contemporary popular culture, right up there with TikTok, AirPods, anime, and Cardi B. In that post, I observed that Bohemian Rhapsody 
was never considered by its creators to be anything other than nonsense. According to Freddie Mercury's friend, the DJ and television personality Kenny Everett, who played a key role in promoting Bohemian Rhapsody on his radio show, according to Everett, the song's lyrics have no meaning whatsoever. According to Everett, Freddie Mercury told him that the words were simply, quote, random rhyming nonsense, unquote. Bohemian Rhapsody's producer, Roy Thomas Baker recalled in 1999, quote, Bohemian Rhapsody was totally insane, but we enjoyed every minute of it. It was basically a joke, but a successful joke. We never stopped laughing, unquote. However, being declared a joke by its author and producer has not stopped the listening public and the critical community from turning Bohemian Rhapsody into a defining masterwork, a philosophical tract of generational import, a song considered by many critics and fans alike to be among the greatest rock and roll songs of all time, a song that routinely pulls in the top five of greatest songs of all time. And lest we forget, in 2012, the readers of Rolling Stone magazine voted Freddie Mercury's performance of Bohemian Rhapsody to be, quote, the greatest in rock history, unquote. And so my post of August 24th, 2020, critical of Bohemian Rhapsody as it was, drew the righteous anger of many of my patrons. So here we go again. Today's post is about yet another overhyped, overregarded, overrated, overanalyzed chunk of rock and roll doggerel. Don McLean's masterpiece, his cultural touchstone. American Pie. We are told that the song, quote, is a recounting of the day the music died, a phrase taken from the song, as a result of the February 3rd, 1959 plane crash that killed Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper, whose real name was Giles Perry Richardson Jr., unquote. Okay, okay, so far so good. We have a song written in 1971, the lyrics of which describe the loss of innocence of the early rock and roll generation, a loss of innocence triggered by a tragic plane crash. The Numbers Speaking of Don McLean's lyric, let's do the numbers. American Pie runs an astonishing 865 words. Yes, yes, I counted them, arrayed in 19 verses. And this was McLean's edited version of the song. McLean's recording of American Pie runs an equally astonishing 8 minutes and 42 seconds, making it, at the time of its release, the longest song ever to enter the Billboard Hot 100 chart. We'd note that American Pie held the record for the longest song ever to score a number one on the charts for 49 years, only to be surpassed in 2021 by the 10-minute version of Taylor Swift's All Too Well. By comparison, Bohemian Rhapsody runs only 5 minutes and 55 seconds, excruciatingly long enough, but nowhere near the total length of either Mr. McLean's or Ms. Swift's offerings. Back to Don McLean's lyric of American Pie. The first three of its 19 verses 
are as follows. Verse 1. A long, long time ago, I can still remember how that music used to make me smile, and I knew, if I had my chance, that I could make those people dance, and maybe they'd be happy for a while. Verse 2. But February made me shiver. With every paper I'd deliver, bad news on the doorstep. I couldn't take one more step. I can't remember if I cried when I read about his widowed bride, but something touched me deep inside. The day the music died. Verse 3. So bye-bye, Miss American Pie. Drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry, and them good old boys were drinking whiskey in rye, singin', this'll be the day that I die. This'll be the day that I die. Okay, with all due respect, I would suggest that McLean should have stopped right there after the third verse, while he was still reasonably ahead, while the meaning of the song was still somewhat coherent. As a public service, I will, with the greatest possible dispatch, explain as best I can those three opening verses. Verse 1. McLean, who was born in 1945, here remembers how much he loved early rock and roll as a child and how much he wanted to make such music himself, music that would make people want to dance and be happy. Verse 2. McLean was just 13 years old when, on February 3, 1959, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper died together in a plane crash. Young McLean had a paper route and it was while delivering papers on a cold winter's day that he read about the crash. Verse 3. The opening of this verse says farewell to the American dream, or at least American innocence, as represented by American pie, by apple pie. Why McLean wrote Miss American Pie is anybody's guess. Some claim that by Miss American Pie, he's referring to the Statue of Liberty, but I think he just needed an extra syllable in the poem and liked the way Miss sounded. The remainder of this third verse always had me fooled. In my mind's eye, I had imagined some hot, humid, moonlight levee in Louisiana with sleeveless, tattooed, unshaven good old boys, driving battered Chevy pickup trucks with Confederate flags tied to their antennas, swigging Jack Daniels from a bottle, the day the music died being a metaphor for their own wasted lives. But despite the faux Southern drawl McLean built into the words in American Pie, he himself grew up in New Rochelle, New York, in Westchester County, a ritzy suburb just north of New York City. For those of you who remember the old Dick Van Dyke TV show, Rob Petrie, a comedy writer in Manhattan played by Dick Van Dyke, and his wife, Laura, played by Mary Tyler Moore, who was costumed to look like Jackie Kennedy, lived there in New Rochelle. As it turns out, here's what the remainder of this third verse is actually about. When McLean was young, there was a bar in New Rochelle called The Levee. When The Levee was dry, closed, McLean and his buds would drive eight miles north to the town of Rye, New York, where them good old boys were drinking whiskey in Rye. Why those good old boys were singing, this'll be the day that I die, is anyone's guess. Perhaps they were depressed, or simply tired of singing 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 
catalog arias, and such. In Italian opera buffa, there's a popular species of aria called a catalog aria in which a singer relates an often lengthy list of information in a humorous way. I would tell you that the most famous such aria is Madamina il catalogo e questo from Wolfgang Mozart and Lorenzo de Ponti's Don Giovanni, during which Don Giovanni's manservant Leporello enumerates in magnificent detail the outstanding physical features of the Don's many conquests. Just so, in the remaining 16 verses of American Pie, Don McLean offers up his list, one containing so much seemingly random information that the song transcends entirely a catalog aria and creates an entirely new genre, that of the kitchen sink aria. And it's the real or imagined meaning of this extraordinary word salad that has made American Pie famous or infamous depending upon your point of view. My point of view of the lyric is decidedly uncharitable. Along with Bohemian Rhapsody and MacArthur Park, yo, no one leaves cakes out in the rain, and whatever metaphoric meaning that line was meant to evoke is wrecked by the visual image it creates. American Pie is a mess, a stream of consciousness, very likely substance-inspired bit of rambling that has come to be accepted as a rock and roll masterwork by critics desperate, desperate, to find meaningful literary content and metaphorical substance in words that lack both. For example, we read that, quote, the theme of the song goes beyond mourning McLean's childhood musical heroes, reflecting the deep cultural changes and profound disillusion and loss of innocence of his generation the early rock and roll generation that took place between the 1959 plane crash and either 1969 or 1970. The meaning of the lyrics, which cryptically allude to many of the jarring events and social changes experienced during the period, has been debated for decades. McLean has repeatedly declined to explain the symbolism behind the many characters and events mentioned." Unquote. Well, duh! Of course Don McLean declined for decades to explain the symbolism behind the characters and events of the song because, in the end, there was no explanation. Like the random rhyming nonsense that Freddie Mercury confessed was the essence of Bohemian Rhapsody. The seemingly endless explanations for and interpretations of American Pie are as random as the lyrics themselves. When Don McLean finally came partially clean about some of the historical allusions in American Pie in 2022, he must have disappointed a lot of people. People who had spent years coming up with complex analyses of the words. Among many other things, McLean confessed that the king that he referenced in the song was not Elvis Presley, that the girl who sang the blues was not Janis Joplin, and that the jester was not Bob Dylan. He claimed that the signature line, this'll be the day that I die, was not a reference, quote, to his life metaphorically ending due to lost love, unquote, but rather it was simply a line he heard and liked in the John Wayne movie, The Searchers. Likewise, McLean claimed that Bye Bye Miss American Pie was not an allusion to lost America, but rather just a reference to Pete Seeger's song, Bye Bye My Rosanna. 
oh my goodness, the things that have been written about American Pie. Here is just the sort of convoluted interpretive gobbledygook we have to contend with. According to the journalist Alex Harris, quote, Another line that has puzzled listeners is Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack Flash sat on a candlestick. Many have speculated that this is a reference to Mick Jagger, who is sometimes referred to as Jack Flash, unquote. We break from Alex Harris's analysis for just a moment. I would point out that others have claimed that this Jack Flash line refers to John F. Jack Kennedy, and that the candlestick refers to the societal conflagration that followed his assassination, or the Cuban Missile Crisis, or Kennedy diddling professional girls in the White House pool while Jackie padded around upstairs. Okay, Alex Harris continues, quote, it, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack Flash sat on a candlestick, has been the subject of much interpretation and speculation among fans and scholars alike. While the song's lyrics are notoriously cryptic and layered with metaphor, there are some clues that can help us understand the meaning of this particular line. One interpretation of the line is that it represents a call to action or a rallying cry. Jack can be seen as a symbol for the American people who are being called to action and urged to be quick and nimble in response to the changes and challenges of the times. Another way to look at Jack is as a heroic figure who is quick-witted and nimble in the face of danger or difficulty. In this sense, the line may be a nod to the traditional nursery rhyme that begins with, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jumped over the candlestick. This interpretation suggests that the song is encouraging people to be brave and fearless in the face of the social and cultural changes of the time. The line could also be a reference to the popular children's game, Jack be nimble, which involves jumping over a candlestick. In this context, the line may be a metaphor for the idea of leaping over obstacles or barriers in order to achieve progress or change. Overall, the meaning of the line, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, in American Pie, is open to interpretation and may vary depending on the listener's own personal and cultural background. However, there's no doubt that the line is an important part of the song's history and has helped to keep it popular and important in culture, unquote. You got that? What malarkey. You know what Don McLean himself said about the line, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack Flash sat on a candlestick in 2022? This is what Don McLean finally said about that line. That it was just a nursery rhyme he remembered from his childhood, one that he used to sing with his siblings. Its inclusion in the song was merely meant to evoke his childhood. In the end, McLean went on the record saying that the lyrics of American Pie were meant to be, quote, impressionistic, unquote, and that they were, again, in McLean's own words, quote, completely fictional with no basis in real life events, unquote. So, where does all this ambiguity leave us? Is American Pie truly the groundbreaking, epic-defining cultural icon so many well-meaning people claim it to be? Is it really, as Record World magazine asserts, quote, a monumental accomplishment of lyric writing, unquote? 
Is it truly, as Mark Kennedy writes, quote, a roadmap for future students of history, unquote? Cuckoo kachu. To my mind, what all this passionate verbiage tells us is how easily we are fooled when searching for high artistic substance in something that is, in fact, not high art. We leave the last word on American Pie to Don McLean himself, whose following comment can be interpreted as cynically or as humorously as we like. In 1991, he said, quote, so when people ask me what American Pie means, I tell them it means I don't ever have to work again if I don't want to." Unquote. Touché. Thank you. To sample and download one or all of my many courses on subjects musical produced by The Great Courses slash The Teaching Company, please visit my website at robertgreenbergmusic.com.